إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Indeed all praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. We seek His aid. And we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah azza wa jal from the evil that is within ourselves and from the evil that is in our actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to guide, there is no one that can ever bring that person astray and lead them astray. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left astray, there is not a single person on the face of this earth that can return them to guidance. I bear witness that there is no God, there is no deity, there is no being that is worthy and deserving of the right to be worshipped except for Allah Rabbul Alameen and I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his slave and his final messenger who was sent with the truth who was sent with guidance who was sent with Al-Islam so that it may be raised and elevated above all other ways and walks of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, He begins and He is addressing the people who believe. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. And know that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He begins a statement in this way, by addressing and calling upon those who believe. Know that whatever follows is of the utmost importance. That whatever follows this statement, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, it is a command from your Lord to either engage in an action or to stay away from it. And know that whatever follows this statement, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, that abiding by it, is from the pillars and the perfection of your Iman. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says and He commands us, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ 
ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان. Your Lord commands you that you cooperate and that you work together amongst yourselves in that which is good and that you work together towards righteousness and that you do not cooperate and that you do not help that you do not assist one another in ithm and udwan in sin and transgression in another ayah in surah al-imran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again he is saying that let there be from amongst you a group of people يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ that they call towards goodness يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ that they encourage and they enjoin that which is good. وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid and they dissuade people from that which is evil, that which is munkar. And it is only they who will be successful. This, ya ikhwan, it is not a suggestion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a command from your Creator. That you enjoin and you promote that which is right and that you forbid people from that which is wrong. It is a responsibility that falls upon the shoulders of every single person who claims and declares that their deen is Islam. It is the responsibility of every single Muslim that to the best of their ability they must enjoin and promote that which is good and forbid and turn people away from sin, from that which is evil, from transgression and from oppressing one another. In a hadith, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu an, he says that he heard the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ Abu Sa'id he says that he heard the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that whenever one of you sees an evil, sees a sin, sees an oppression, sees someone's right being taken away, sees some transgression occurring, that it is upon you to stop it with your hand. And if you are unable to do this, then you stop it with your tongue. And if you are still unable to do this, then you do it with your heart. And this is the lowest level of Iman. This is the weakest of Iman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, here he is giving us three categories of people. Three methods, three ways in which we can aid one another in staying away from sin, in staying away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. The first of them he mentions is that you stop a sin, you stop someone from committing a sin with your hand. This applies to a person who has some sort of direct authority over the situation. Whether it be the Imam of the Masjid, it be some leader of the community, even down to you as leaders of your households, if you see that a sin is occurring, is being done by someone under your authority, it is your responsibility and a commandment from your Lord that you command that this sin be stopped. But your responsibility does not end there. As the head, as someone in authority, it is your responsibility not only to command that that sin be stopped, but you must enforce and ensure that it is stopped. Be yadih with your hand, 
put some measure in, in place so that this sin is stopped. The next category of people mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are those who when they are witnessing a sin, they are in the presence of someone committing a sin. They have heard of someone committing a sin. They have heard of some oppression taking place. They have heard of someone's right being taken from them. That they speak out against it. That they warn and they advise this person committing the sin to stay away from it. That they speak out and encourage that this person whose right was taken away, that it be returned. However, Ya Ikhwan, when we are doing this, we must take utmost precaution that in advising our brothers and sisters that we do not cause more harm. That this advisement against sin, it should be done in the best of manners, in the best of ways. Take your brother or your sister aside. Speak to them in private. Do not embarrass them in front of everyone. How many times are we in the masjid and a brother or sister, maybe they forgot to turn off their cell phone, their phone. And it goes off. And we have brothers and sisters yelling and screaming at them. Embarrassing them in front of everyone. Or how many times have we been in the masjid and there are children in the back some may be running, some may be playing. And you have brothers and sisters yelling and screaming at them. Wallahi, you're only doing more harm. Because when that child grows up, we all want to know, how come the masajid are so empty? Where are all of the children that we used to see? But rather by embarrassing them and screaming at them and advising them in this way, you shun them from the masajid. So we must be very careful that in advising and preventing others from committing sin, that we do not shun them away from committing that which is good. The final group mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are those who perform an action of the heart. This group, there is no exception. This action must be done by every single Muslim. And it is that when you see a sin, when you hear of a sin, when you hear of some evil, that you hate it, that you disapprove of it in your heart. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, ذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman," That this hatred of sin, it is the weakest of faith. That if you are not able to hate and disapprove of sin, if this quality leaves your heart, so too does your iman. How many times today, whether it be ourselves or someone we know, they may be committing a sin or we ourselves may be committing a sin. We, we ourselves may be doing something wrong. And we try to justify it in our heads. We try to justify it and say that, you know what, maybe it's not that bad. This thing that I'm doing, this thing that I'm seeing, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not a sin. Know that when you are not able to hate and disapprove of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, that if you are unable to do the very least, then what is left of your iman? Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he was, he was once asked a question. He was asked, who are these people that we can, we can consider them that they are the living dead? That they are alive, yet they are dead at the same time. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he responded to this question and he said that these people who are alive and dead at the same time, are those who cannot acknowledge that which is right as haq. That what is right is right. They cannot acknowledge this. And that they cannot reject and disapprove of that which is wrong. They are constantly trying to justify 
justify the sin that they are committing or justify the injustice that they see being committed and know that when you lose this hatred for sin in your heart your iman will begin to fade as well aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fastaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur ar-rahim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد When Allah سبحانه وتعالى gave us this command he did not only say that we are to pre uh, prevent or forbid people from committing evil. He also included that we aid and that we cooperate amongst ourselves in gaining the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we cooperate and we help one another in that which is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah al dhariyat He says, وَذَكِّرْ He says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He is telling us to remind one another and not just remind them of good once and say that I have done my part and you back off. Rather, he says, ذَكِّرْ that you continuously remind one another. Don't make it a one-time thing. Every time you see one another, remind one another of good. فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That reminders and reminding one another of good, it can do nothing but only bring benefit for the believers. Reminding one another of good, it can be done in two ways. The first of them is through our speech. And the second is through our actions. That which people see us do. And wallahi ya ikhwan, there is no better example. There is no better example of the benefit that arises when we all cooperate and help one another towards doing that which is good than that of the guest that is about to arrive, the guest that we are about to receive, the month of Ramadan. Many times, Amongst ourselves in this month, we find that we are constantly reminded to do good. We find amongst ourselves, when we are amongst our friends and our colleagues and people we associate with, very commonly you hear people asking one another, will you be at the masjid for Maghrib? Are you going to be breaking your fast with all the rest of people who have fasted? Are you going to be at the masjid for Taraweeh? Are you going to be staying throughout the night for Qiyamul Layl? How much of the Qur'an have you recited today? Even amongst little children who are now beginning to understand the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessing of this month, constantly you hear them asking one another, Have you fasted today? Are you fasting today? How many days of the month have you fasted? Encouraging and supporting and motivating one another to do that which is good. And then when we come to the masajid during this month, we are surrounded by people worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are surrounded by people offering salah. You are surrounded by people reciting the Qur'an. You are surrounded by people making dhikr of Allah, remembering Allah. You are surrounded by people giving sadaqah and giving charity in the path of Allah. And it increases us in motivation. And it encourages us ourselves to do some good so that we too may benefit. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
He make us from amongst those who enjoin and encourage good and forbid and assist people in staying away from sin. And that He allow us to do this in a way that brings about only good without harming or, or belittling anyone or embarrassing anyone. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He allow us to be from amongst those who by our speech and our actions we serve as encouragement and motivation for others to do well, to do good as well. And that He make us from amongst those who will always motivate and work together with one another to gain the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows each and every single one of us here to witness the blessed month of Ramadan and that He allow us to take maximum benefit and capitalize upon every second of this blessed guest when it arrives. Allahumma balighna Ramadan Allahumma balighna Ramadan Allahumma balighna Ramadan Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna Allahumma innaka afuun kareem tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقيموا الصلاه